morning, afternoon, evening, people. Uh, as you probably know by the description of the video, we're making some beer today. So I am brewing this Bulldog IPA. As you can see, makes 5.5% beer, 23 litres, 40 pints. So let's just get straight into it. Top tip. It comes in a bag like this, or even a tin, put in some hot water, just about 20 minutes, and it just um, loosens it all up in there. Next thing we're going to do, it's got three litres of boiling water in there. To that, we're going to add one kilo of sugar. Give that a mix in. Now, as you see on the packet, it said 5.5%, so we're going to test that. Next thing we're going to do is open up our packet. And the good thing with these that come in a packet like this is you can just roll the packet and squeeze it all out. However, we will fill this with hot water, boiling water, just to rinse out any of the malt extract that's remaining in this packet. And we'll add that to. And that's it, rinse out of hot water. Now this is a, a cost of living buster. This works out at about 39 pence a pint. Watch till the end, till at the end we will be tasting this beer. I'm get you know what it's like for that price. Now with that mixing, the next thing we're gonna do is top this up to the top with cold water. Up now to 23 litres, 40 pints. Can give that a stir and then we'll go ahead and take a hydrometer reading. I don't know how well you can see the hydrometer reading, but it's at 1062. 1062 original gravity. Now we're going to pitch our yeast, just sprinkle it on the top. There's no need to stir it in. We're going to cover that up, put an airlock on, leave that for five to seven days. Right, it's been fermenting now for 14 days. You don't have to leave it that long. I just got carried away and busy at work and stuff, so I've not got around to doing it. I'm going to quickly show you something. So this is a cider that I'm doing, a scrumpy jack style hard apple cider, cloudy. I haven't done a video on that, so if you want to see that video, subscribe. That's coming out probably in about two or three weeks. That's been on for about a month. If you see the airlock there, you can see how the water's not level because there's still pressure in this. That tells me this is still fermenting. If you look at this airlock, you can see the water is level. It tells me there's no pressure in this. That's a good combat indicator that the fermentation has finished on this beer. However, we're still gonna do a hydrometer reading. We're gonna work out the ABV. 5.5 the packet said, so we're gonna find out right now if that's right or not. Okay, so in this case, we're gonna pop the hydrometer straight in the hydrometer has been sterilised, so sterilise the hydrometer, pop it straight in. I'm going to give it a spin, just get the air bubbles off. Leave it to settle for a second, and then we'll take our reading. Now you can see there, that's coming at 1010. I've done the maths, it's coming at 5.6%. The packets are 5.5, so they're on the money, aren't they? So we're going to move on now to bottling. And secondary fermentation. Right, what we're going to move on to now is bottling and secondary fermentation. By secondary fermentation, what I mean is we're going to make that, this beer fizzy. So what's happened is as the sugar in this ferment turns to alcohol, you get CO2 produced. That's what produces the bubbles coming out of the airlock. In this, there's still residual yeast. It's just without sugar to eat. What we're going to do is we're going to add some more sugar to that, bottle it, seal the bottles, What's going to happen is that extra little bit of sugar we put in will ferment with the yeast, residual yeast in this beer. The CO2 will be created, only this time the CO2 is trapped in the bottle and can't escape. And that's what's going to make our beer fizzy. The amount of sugar you add depends on how fizzy you make the beer. So if you've got a flat beer, less sugar. Something really fizzy like a lager, a bit more sugar. 
but not too much, we can get bottles could explode. So what I've done here is I've taken 120 grams of sugar, which is what I've worked out for this beer, if I want, for the right fizziness. To that I've got a bit of water, some boiling water, get our sugar dissolved into the boiling water. Now this does add 0.5% ABV to the beer. So this beer came in at 5.6%, percent it will now be 6% or 6.1%. So I'll get that mixed in and I'll move on to the next stage. Next thing I'll do is I'll rack this beer off from this container to this container. I'm going to leave the sediment behind. And what you want to do is add the solution we made, the priming solution, in there, in addition that extra sugar. Give it a little stir, very gently, we don't want to introduce any oxygen at this point. Now people will tell you that you shouldn't do it this way, you should make a priming solution, you should prime each bottle individually, then bottle the beer, because using this method you're going to add oxygen to that beer, the beer will go bad. I've never had a bottle of beer go bad using this method. So when this is full, we're going to give it one more gentle stir just to make sure that sugar solution is mixed nice and evenly with that beer, then we move on to bottling. And there you can see the amount of sediment we've left behind. The reason we do that is because when you gently stir that sugar into the beer, you don't want to disturb all that sediment because the beer will then just take ages to clear because all that will be in the bottles. What I'd like to do is my bottles will line out like this on top of some uh, kitchen roll then the floor doesn't get sticky and the wife doesn't kill me and I'll just go ahead and bottle the beer. Now what we're using here is called a filling wand basically a little valve on the bottom there so we need to press that valve bottom of the bottle, the beer comes out, we lift it up, it stops the flow. So go ahead now and fill the rest of these. There's obviously more than this. Well that's all I've done now. So I'll get these boxed up, get the rest of the bottles out, finish bottling the beer and I'll take you on to the next step. Okay so that's our beer bottle now. So what I'm going to do is put these boxes away and in a warm spot for about three to five days for the second fermentation to take place. Then we'll put them away to clear. I'll tell you about that in a minute and then we'll have a taste in. Alright, so that's been on second fermentation for about five days. Um, and then you've got to clear the beer. About another five days to clear it unless you cold crush it. Cold crushing or cold clearing. Put the beer somewhere cold, it will clear quicker. Um, if it's winter, stick it in the shed. I've done this in the fridge. That's been cold clearing for about two days. Hopefully it's clear. Now with these bottles, the sediment is going to settle to the bottom of the bottle. So once you've cleared them, don't shake them up, keep them upright. Um, and you've got to pour them carefully as well, I'll show you now. So we'll get this bottle open now. You hear that hiss? So secondary fermentation has worked. We're going to have a fizzy beer. And then when you pour it, pour it gently. What we want to do is leave the last little bit of beer in the bottom with the sediment behind. Like that. So there you go, have a look at that. It's a nice pint. It's clear. It's not 100% clear. Nearly there, another day or two, but 100% clear that. See the bubbles? Nice and fizzy. Give it a bit of taste. Mm. Really nice, nice IPA. You can definitely tell it's five point six percent as well. Taste the alcohol in there. So uh, if you want to, maybe brew some, brew some for yourself. Brew Dog IPA. Thirty nine pence a pint. Can't go wrong. Uh, if you like that video, give us a thumbs up. 
you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button because it really helps the channel. And uh, I'll see you next time. Have a good day.